From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Francis Alonzo reporting. Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi is set to make his case Tuesday for more U.S. help in defeating Islamic State militants as he meets with President Barack Obama at the White House. Ahead of the visit, Mr. Abadi said Iraq has received a boost in support from the United States, but wants to see more as his forces push their effort to recapture more territory that the militants seized in the past year. Since August, the U.S. has been leading a coalition that has carried out more than 1,800 airstrikes targeting Islamic State targets in Iraq. U.S. officials said Monday they were not aware of any specific requests from Iraq. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry briefs lawmakers in the Senate Tuesday after speaking with Congressman Monday about the framework nuclear agreement with Iran. Mr. Kerry spoke to reporters. I very much look forward to the opportunity to share thoughts, listen to questions, have a chance to have a discussion with the members of the House. And I'm particularly pleased to be able to go into some detail because there have been a lot of representations, misrepresentations, a lot of questions raised. And it's good to have an opportunity to really be able to discuss with people what is really contained within the parameters. Gunmen, meanwhile, have blasted their way into the building housing the government's higher education ministry in the capital of Mogadishu, Police report at least one huge explosion, followed by gunfire at the scene. The Al-Shabaab militant group has claimed responsibility for the attack. Witnesses say they have seen casualties, but so far there is no official word on anyone dead. Early this month, Al-Shabaab targeted Kenya's Garissa University, in which 148 people died. This is VOA News. A senior Iranian official said Tuesday that Iran could begin delivering sophisticated 300 air defense systems to Russia by the end of this year. The statement to Russia's Interfax news agencies by the head of Iran's Supreme National Security Council comes a day after Russian President Vladimir Putin lifted a five-year ban on providing the missile batteries to Iran. Meanwhile, the Obama administration is considering Russia's intention to sell those air defense systems to Iran. Josh Ernest is a White House spokesman. The United States has previously made known our objections to that sale. And I understand that Secretary Kerry had an opportunity to raise these concerns once again uh, in a recent conversation with his Russian counterpart. Uh, I'm not in a position to obviously speculate on the decision-making process that uh, Russia is engaged in right now. Uh, but I do think it's safe to say that Russia understands uh, that the United States certainly takes very seriously the safety and security of our allies in the region. And now to Nigeria, where the president-elect, Mohamedou Buhari, says he cannot promise that authorities will find the 219 schoolgirls kidnapped a year ago by Boko Haram militants in the village of Chibuk. He says we don't know if the Chibuk girls can be rescued. He said in a statement Tuesday, as the country was marking the one-year anniversary of the mass abduction, Mr. Buhari has criticized the current government's efforts to find the girls, saying his administration will act differently from the government we replace. In Guinea, several people were shot and wounded in clashes with police on Monday in the capital of Conakry during anti-government protests aimed at longtime President Alpha Conde. The opposition leader, Chelo Dalen Diallo, says the demonstrations will continue until the protesters' demands are met. The opposition boycotted Parliament in March in protest over the timetable for the presidential elections to be held October 11th. They say that broke an agreement that ho uh, to hold long-delayed local elections first.
Human Rights Watch said Tuesday that its investigation into attacks by Syrian government forces last month in Idlib province strongly suggests the military dropped barrel bombs with toxic chemicals. The group said the ba- that it was based on reports from witnesses as well as audio and video from attack sites that there were strong indications of chemical attacks at three sites, while three others needed further investigation. All the attacks took place in or near the city of Idlib. The United Nations Security Council is due to vote Tuesday on a draft resolution that would impose an arms embargo on the leaders of Yemen's Houthi rebels and demand that that group withdraw from Sana'a and other areas it's captured. The measure was drafted by Jordan and Arab Gulf countries. I'm Francis Alonso in Washington. That's the latest world news from BOA.